Hello friends, hope you're all doing well. In today's video, we're gonna look at the possibilities for a seven star Terror Raid event from Mewtwo in July, as well as potentially a Pokemon Presents that will be coming along with it. So as of recording this video, yesterday we got a brand new update patch for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. The 1.3.2 patch was meant to come out to resolve issues with three particular moves that had been traded in from Pokemon Home into Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. These moves were the signature attacks of Sneasler, Cleaver and Hisuian Samurott in Dire Claw, Stone Axe and Ceaseless Edge. They were meant to resolve the critical hit high chance ratio that these moves had but unfortunately the descriptions when the update went live didn't actually do this whether or not the mechanics have actually been changed in the game is another question alongside this though when it was data mined by matt yukana we did get some tidbits for information around dlcs namely the tms that we got here but also more importantly this bit of battle text that popped up in the data mine which does outline mew is going to go all out against a formidable opponent and i think this ties in quite nicely with what we're going to talk about in today's video kind of all kicked off really when we got this tweet from ku ku riddler ku is a very well-renowned leaker within the community who posted this yesterday with the mewtwo and the mightiest mark now the only way you're going to get mewtwo in the games with the mightiest mark currently is through a seven star terror raid but there's a lot more to kind of back up this tweet with than just this one post from riddler alongside this yesterday we had an update from cerebi saying that we were getting mewtwo introduced on the 21st of july in pokemon unite and also a tweet from uridin another leak analyst put this tweet up mid july starting to look like it might be getting busy pokemon presents so he's got four posts here one of them is an event that's happening in pokemon go which is catching some z's now this isn't directly related to what we're talking about for the Mewtwo, but it does back up potentially a presents that could come alongside the Mewtwo event. The other thing that we're going to talk about, a very important thing, I think, that supports when we will likely see Mewtwo and that seven star terror raid happen in Scarlet and Violet is this information here. First Pokemon movie aired on July the 18th in 1998 in Japan. This marks the date of this year's as the 25th anniversary of the first Pokemon movie. Movie. So this is a pretty big date for that first Pokemon movie and what's the movie all about? Mewtwo and Mew. Okay, they're the centerpieces. So we did talk about that little bit of text from Matt's data mine here with that Mew is going out against a formidable opponent. Now I initially thought this could relate to DLC content but when you delve a little bit deeper into this all then that text makes more sense if they are kind of trying to replicate maybe a scenario where Mew is going up against Mewtwo in the game a formidable opponent is going to be Mewtwo right so could link to that as well but it's not to say that it isn't part of DLC information where Mew plays a big role in the DLCs as well so as we can see there is a lot going on with Mewtwo this coming month and for good reason obviously the 25th anniversary of the first movie is a big deal but what makes me say that we're going to get a Pokemon Presents alongside a Mewtwo Terror Raid event that we're going to potentially see in July well this tweet from Ku we're going right back to April here and this particular tweet your bolt version info here here's the first batch of mons you are going to be wearing special hats or masks in Sadachi. Who so always refers to Sadachi as either Kitakami or the DLC part one either one is referring to the teal mask all these pokemon the only thing they have in common is they're all seven star terror raid event pokemon and they all have that mightiest mark so in my thinking the mightiest mark has to have a link to these new special terrestrialized forms which is the wearing special hats so the hats the headgear is relating to terrestrialization or masks so as it stands we don't really know what the masks are related to from the teal mask we know there is a lot of depictions of masks masks and obviously Ogapong wears a mask as well so masks are heavily related whether or not they have a new mechanic tied to them or whether or not it's just a special terrestrialization that you can acquire from when you visit Kitakami it's not known yet but there is some new mechanic that is attached to these pokemon and you've got to say that it is going to be probably tied to the mightiest mock another thing to support this even further is more data mined information from that latest patch matt also noticed an update to the description of the mightiest mark you can see the old description and mark for pokemon caught in a seven star terror raid battle and the new description which changed with that update and mark for an especially mighty pokemon so this 
kind of indicates that there is more reliance on it being for very special Pokemon rather than just these Pokemon caught in seven star terror raid events. So it would indicate that they have some importance further down the line rather than just having this special mark. And with this tweet from Ku, it does tie in quite nicely. But there is some correlation between the Midas mark and these new special transformations that we're gonna see. Oh, so back in April as well, this is a tweet from Light, another great theory analyst, and has been pretty bang on with all these predictions with the seven star terror raid so far. I have this imagery here where he had a question mark, which he always outlined to be a special event Pokemon, which was a legendary that was gonna follow the final Rillaboom or Delphox. At this time, he didn't know which one was gonna kind of come first. We know that from information that we've already had that the Delphox event was actually penciled in from the 26th to the 28th of May. Uh, you can see it here, the preparation for uh, Incredible Delphox. This was from the Spanish Pokemon Home app, but shortly after the Chestnut era raids that we had, uh, that got taken down. So we haven't had that event returning yet. So we know that the Delphox is lined up to be that next seven star terror raid event that we will be getting. And potentially after that, it would make sense to get the Rillaboom. And then after the Rillaboom event, he theorized that we get a DLC trailer, which went into depth about this new mechanic, teased it a little bit. And then after that, on the back of it, we'd get a special seven star terror raid event for a legendary Pokemon which could line up to be that seven star Mewtwo like we're talking about in today's video. So if you look at the seven star terror raids that we've had so far, we've had all of the starters from Pokemon Legends Arceus. The gen six starters that we've had, we've had Greninja, Chestnut, we haven't had the Delphox, we know that's been confirmed, right? So that is coming to the game at some point. The gen eight starters are the only other ones that we've had and we're only missing the Rillaboom. To, so to finish this kind of like cycle, to complete all of the starters from the ones that we've seen already, we just need the Delphox and the Rillaboom and then that would leave room for potentially a special or a big seven star terror raid event like the Mewtwo to follow after that. But of course, if we do get a seven star terror raid event for Mewtwo, what makes it so significant or having a Pokemon Presents alongside it? Well, I think because we have seen this tweet from Riddler Koo, where he does go into detail about these are the Pokemon that are gonna be wearing special hats or having a special transformation. This new mechanic does need discussed and needs revealed uh, before the DLCs get dropped. And it would be a good opportunity to have a Pokemon Presents with a brand new DLC trailer, which goes into detail about this new mechanic, maybe teasing it, showing off maybe the masks, how they work, or these new terrestrialized unique forms that we're gonna be getting and the importance of the Mightiest Mark related to those in the games. And then on top of that, after you've done this teaser trailer, you can then announce the Mewtwo seven star terror raid event that kind of plays in with the 25th anniversary of that first movie and maybe even do a mystery gift event for Mew as well, which is really teased here by Light when we go a bit further on in his tweets. So this was the initial tweet from Light back in April saying that this was a special Pokemon that we were gonna be getting. And then this all fast forward right to today where we see Light yesterday tweeting out this updated image with a armored Mewtwo. Now I can't get behind the armored Mewtwo as the the special Pokemon. We have had Armored Mewtwo appear in other games before. Of course, Pokemon Go had it back in 2019 and Pokemon Quest had a little mini game for it to appear there as well. But I don't really think we're gonna be seeing Armored Mewtwo as the seven star terror raid event. I would think that it was just regular Mewtwo with that Mightiest Mark attached to it. Psychic could totally be the typing that we see on it, but it may be dark or something like that that we haven't had so far because if the Mightiest Mark is so important and like who is saying, you've got to say that we're going to get one Pokemon per type that's going to be able to have one of these special terrestrialized transformations. So after the Mewtwo event that we do get potentially in July, that would leave six types left to kind of run through until the DLC drops, which may indicate when we are getting the DLCs. And this is how I could see it playing out because the Gimme Ghoul event is running right now 
the and it ends on the 2nd of July, I could see a terror raid event being announced on the 3rd of July, which could indicate where we are going. Now, this would be perfect for a schedule like this. So the 7th to the 9th, we see the Del Fox 7 star terror raid, but we only get these for one weekend because they're playing catch up, right? Then from the 14th to the 16th of July, following that Del Fox, we get the Rillaboom 7 star terror raid event. Then we've got to outline some other big things that are going on in the Pokemon community. Uh, outside of that so on pokemon go over the 15th to the 16th of july there looks like there's a pokemon sleep event going on in pokemon go catching some z's we've co covered that already then on the 18th of july the following week we have that 25th anniversary of the, for the Pokemon First movie. We also have on the 21st of July, release of the Pokeball Plus Plus, which is an item that you use specifically with Pokemon Sleep and Pokemon Go, of course. And we also have on that date, Mewtwo being added to Pokemon Unite. So there is a lot of things going on in the Pokemon universe at the minute across different games that we've got available to it. Obviously as well, we have the 151 set that is picking up so much FOMO in the team. TCG, which could be talked about as well but pokemon sleep finally after like four years looks like it will be releasing this summer we've got that pokeball plus plus releasing on the 21st we've got stuff happening in pokemon unite we've got the mewtwo and mew first movie anniversary happening in july as well so that feels like there's plenty of things for pokemon to talk about that would support a presents in july and what better time to do that than on that week between the 17th and the 21st particularly the 18th of July on that specific anniversary where we discuss all of these things going on in the franchise you give a trailer updating on potentially a new mechanic happening in the teal mask with the masks or the special terrestrialization related to the mightiest marks and to celebrate the 25th anniversary of that first movie you drop a seven star terror raid event for Mew too and potentially even a mystery gift for Mew as well it just feels very fitting that it looks like we we could get at least that event happening around that date in July, especially if they play catch up with the Del Fox, with the Rillaboom that we do need in the games before then. So I guess, you know, we'll get to Monday. And if that Del Fox raid event has been announced for that week, then we know we're looking like this could be a possibility. Whereas if that doesn't get announced, then I guess this theory is dead in the water. So we'll know soon enough whether or not all that will be happening. But as well as that, a Pokemon Presents, there is enough happening in the Pokemon world at the minute for them to do a Pokemon Presents. And it does make sense that they want to reveal or at least tease a new mechanic that we'll see in the teal mask uh, before they drop that Mewtwo event, which could be also linked to it. They're my two cents on everything from today's video. But more importantly, let me know what you think about everything that we've covered in today's video. I would love to hear your thoughts on whether or not you think we'll see a Pokemon Presents and this Mewtwo event. And how do you think we're going to get Mew in the games? Is it going to be a mystery gift? Is it going to be a terror raid? I would have said if it plays an important part in the DLCs, it has to be a mystery gift that we get in game. Or a gift Pokemon like we got the Glaring Slowpoke in Sword and Shield. So that could be something how we get Mew in the games potentially. But I would love to hear what you think, like I say. And we will end things up there so thank you so much for tuning in friends have a great rest of your day and i'll see you all in another video very soon so until then take care and bye bye